Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with the Dicey Review, and tonight we're going to be learning how to play the two to four player game Kanban Drivers Edition from Stronghold Games. I do want to briefly mention that this video is going to be a little bit longer than my typical videos because this is a very in-depth game. I wanted to make sure and cover each gameplay aspect very thoroughly so that you would have a complete understanding of how to play. So make sure and stick with us through the entire video and I think that you'll understand the game much better. Kanban Drivers Edition comes with all of the components that you see here, including a double-sided game board, test track overlays for two and three player games, 35 design tiles, 12 factory goal tiles, four double-sided player boards, five demand tiles, six final goals tiles, 32 performance goal cards, 12 Kanban order cards, 20 award plaque tiles, 16 book tiles, 3 banked shift tiles, 11 parts voucher tiles, 24 red seat tiles, 20 lock tiles, 2 double-sided player aid sheets, the white components for the test track, the pink components to represent the AI Sandra, 60 different part cubes in 6 different colors, player components in each of 4 different colors, and 40 different wooden car tokens in 5 different colors. To begin setup, place the board in the middle of the table. Then each player will choose a color and take a matching player board. The player boards are double-sided, one side showing an advanced version and the other side showing a version for beginners. In our example, we're going to be teaching the game using the beginner version. Collect all of the player components of your color. Each player will also receive three performance goal cards and two Kanban order cards. Next, place a lock token on any space of your player board showing a lock symbol. Take one parts voucher tile and place it on the appropriate space of your player board. Each player should then take their smaller meeple and place it to the left of the zero on the certification track. Players should then place one of their discs on the zero space of the banked shift track. Then place one of the player discs on each of the five training certification tracks. The players can play the game in two different game modes with a nice factory manager or a harsh factory manager. We'll discuss what this means in detail later. But for a starting play, the game recommends using the nice manager. When using the nice manager, players start at zero productivity points. Place the last player disc of each player's color on this zero space. Next, place each of the player seat tiles on the indicated spaces for their player color. Make sure to place the seat with the certification symbol on the back over the seat with a lock symbol. Place all of the seats face down. Finally, place the last lock tokens on top of the seats showing the certification symbol. After all of this player setup has been done, make sure and take the performance goal cards and the Kanban order cards and place them in face down decks near the player board. There are three areas of the board where players will place factory goal tiles. Shuffle the factory goal tiles and place one at a time in each of the two spaces. Make sure to put the lowered number tiles on the left and the higher number tiles on the right. Then, for a four-player game, place two red seats on each tile for a total of 12 seats. In a three-player and a two-player game, the number of red seats placed will be lower. Randomly select three car parts from the supply and place them in the appropriate spaces of the recycling center. Then place all parts, vouchers, and book tiles on the appropriate roof spaces on the player board. Place all the remaining red seat tiles near the game board as a supply. Then, at the top of each of the five training tracks, randomly place three face-down award plaques in the spaces indicated. In a two and a three player game, the number of plaques placed will be less. Then place a red seat on top of each of these stacks. Next, we'll look at how to set up each different department in the factory. In the testing and innovation department, start by placing one car part of each color to the left of the upgrade track. Place the white pace car on either of the checkered spaces in the testing track. Place the production cycle marker on the zero space of the meeting track. And place the white meeting cube in the middle of the test track. In the assembly line department, start by placing one car of each color in the matching conveyor row on the top and the second row. Then put all remaining cars near the board, visible to all players. Shuffle the five demand tiles and place one demand tile each on the indicated spaces to the left and the right of the assembly tracks. There will be an indicated number of red seats on each demand tile. 
Place red seat tokens equal to the indicated number on top of these tiles. After this has been done, place the remaining demand tiles face down near the board as a supply. In the logistics department, we'll start by placing parts. Draw the top card of the Kanban order deck and then place the matching number of parts in each of the departments. So for instance, in this case, we would place two yellow parts and then one each of white, blue, black, and pink. After this has been done, return the Kanban card to the bottom of the deck. In the design department, place one random design tile in each of the eight rightmost spaces. Then randomize the remaining 27 design tiles and make three stacks of nine tiles each on the three left spaces in the department. This leftmost stack is called the central deck, and that will be important later in gameplay. In the administration department, start by drawing four performance goal cards from the top of the deck and placing them in the middle spaces where all players can see. Then shuffle the final goals tiles and place one face up in the indicated space. Return the remaining unused tiles to the box. Then for each player color, turn one seat tile face up. Make sure not to turn over the tiles showing the certification symbol. Place the pink round marker on the zero space of the weak track, and then place the pink marker representing Sandra in her space in the administration department. Make sure to place the remaining part cubes near the board as a supply. After all of this has been done, you're ready to play the game. Next, we'll give a general overview of the game so that players have a better understanding of what they're trying to accomplish. In Kanban, players act as ambitious car factory workers trying to impress the factory manager and further their career. There are a number of different departments that players can visit during the game to take actions. Each action space within the factory has a number of shifts. Shifts are separated into three hour increments. So for instance, this spot would have two shifts, and this spot would have three shifts. You can think of shifts as action points that you can use to take actions within the selected department. So for instance, since this player selected an action space with three shifts, they now have three shifts or three action points to spend within this department performing actions. Each department will also have a certification track that will allow players to train within that department and become certified. Each step on the certification track costs one shift within that department. So for instance, on a player's turn, they could spend two of their three shifts training in this department and then spend the remaining shift to take an action within that department or spend their third shift to continue training. The game also comes with a factory AI, Sandra. Sandra can be played using a nice mode or a harsh mode. Essentially, if playing with the nice variant for Sandra, which is recommended for starting players, Sandra will potentially reward players. If playing with the harsh Sandra, she will potentially penalize players. Sandra doesn't take any actions in the very first round of the game, but starting in round two and then going forward, every round Sandra will move to the leftmost available space and block that spot. In future rounds, she will continue to work her way back towards administration by selecting the next available open space. When she finally makes her way back to the administration department, she will always reside in her desk space, and she will trigger an end of week scoring, which we'll look at in more detail later. When players take actions in the different departments, when they're finished, they will lay down their worker, showing that they have completed all of their actions. Player order for selecting actions for the next round is always determined going from left to right on the action spaces. So in this example, the yellow player would get to select their action space first in the upcoming round. A player always has to visit a different department each day. So for instance, the yellow player could pick any other department besides the assembly line to take their actions in the next day. Once the yellow player has selected their different department, the next player in line would get to choose their action space. It's important to note that Sandra is included in this process. So in this example, Sandra would act before any other players and would once again work her way back towards administration by selecting the first open action space. This space would be this space here in the logistics department. The rest of the players would then select their new action spaces, starting with the blue player. In the very first round of the game, the action selection order is different, and we'll look at that in more detail in just a moment. Before the start of the game, choose a first player randomly. In our example, 
the purple player was chosen as first player. Then, beginning with the start player and then in a clockwise direction, each player will select one of the certification spaces in the zero box on the certification track. This is important for two reasons. In the very first round of the game, turn order will be determined by players' positions on the certification track. So for instance, if after selecting bonuses the players' meeples were in this order, the orange player would get to select the department they want to work in first, followed by the purple, yellow, and then blue players. The second reason is that later in the game, when meetings are triggered, players are allowed to score objectives in turn order based on the certification track. So if a meeting were triggered, the orange player would get to score first, followed by the purple player, yellow, and then blue. We'll look at how meetings are conducted in a few minutes. When selecting a certification space at the start of the game, players may move on to a space that shows a bonus. For instance, the purple player, if they go here, would get one parts voucher tile. Normally, when claiming a bonus tile, players have to wait until the end of the round to claim that bonus. They can't use it in the same day. But during this setup activity, the players will immediately get the benefits listed on the spaces where they decide to put their certification meeple. We'll look at what all of these bonus tiles do during the explanation of actions. Let's say that the yellow player decided to take this space here. The yellow player would immediately get to bank one shift. This is indicated by moving the player colored marker on this banked shift track. Once again, we'll look at what banked shifts do when explaining the actions in the departments. Next, we'll say that the blue player selected this space, giving them one book tile. And finally, the orange player must select this space because it's the only one remaining. But it's not all bad news. This means that the orange player will select first in the following activities. Next, in certification order from right to left, each player will perform the following steps. First, the player will select one part from the logistics department. This part must be stored on the player board in the space indicated for parts. Then, the players will select one design tile from any of the face-up spaces in the design department. It's important to note that normally players are not allowed to select tiles from these three stacks unless they're certified in this department. During this starting round, however, players can select from these piles if they wish. So for instance, the blue player could take this design. Any designs taken must be placed in one of the spaces on the player board indicated for designs. After selecting parts and designs, slide the design tiles to the right to fill any uncovered spaces, and then replace the tiles that are missing from the appropriate deck. It's important to note that after this step, car parts will not be replenished. There are two parts to every round. There's a department selection phase where players will select which departments they want to work in. And then there's a working phase where players will spend shifts in the selected departments to take actions. In the very first round of the game, the department selection phase will be in certification order, meaning that the players will select which department they will work in based on their order on the certification track. So for instance, in the very first round of the game, Orange will select their department first, followed by purple, blue, and yellow. So for instance, after the first department selection phase, the player meeples may look something like this. It's important to note that in future department selection phases, turn order for selecting new departments is left to right on the action spaces. So for instance, yellow would select their new department first, followed by orange, purple, blue, and then Sandra. Now that we've given an overview of gameplay and talked about the different phases and the general mechanics of worker placement, let's look at each department's actions in detail. The first department we want to look at is the design department. In the design department, players can spend their shifts to gather designs from the available design spaces or to train. When selecting designs, players can select any of the face-up tiles in the eight rightmost spaces. If players are able to certify, they will be able to select these tiles later. Let's look at the purple player's turn, for instance. The purple player went to the spot showing two shifts. So the purple player has two shifts to spend in the design department. For one shift each, a player can select any of the face-up designs in the eight rightmost spaces. So for instance, for two shifts, the player could select these two designs. The purple player could then place these two designs in the two open spaces that they have for card designs. It's important to note 
that the fifth design space is locked for now. We'll talk about how to unlock that in a moment. Players can never place more designs than they have available spaces. If players take designs above or below the symbols showing these bonuses, they get to receive these bonuses at the end of the round. So for instance, if a player were to take this design, they would gain one book token. The player would be able to place the book token to the side of their player board and then gain that book token at the end of the round. It can't be used in the same round. If a player were to take a design from the farthest right two spaces, they would get to bank one shift at the end of the round. To indicate that a player has banked a shift, they will move their player disc on the banked shift track one space to the right for each shift they gain. Let's briefly look at what these bonuses do for a player on their turn. Players can spend banked shifts in addition to the shifts that they receive from their selected action spaces. Banked shifts can be spent to add shifts to the action that a player has selected on their turn. So for instance, the purple player has selected an action space that gives them two shifts in the design department. If they wanted to, however, they could spend some of their banked shifts to add to the amount of actions that they could take in this department. It is important to note, however, that a player is never able to spend more than four shifts with any one action. So for instance, since this purple player has taken a space that gives them two shifts in the design department, they could spend up to two of their banked shifts to spend a total of four shifts in this department. The other action that a player can take in the design department is to train. The training action can be taken in any department. For one shift, a player can move their training marker one space up the training track. So let's look at the purple player's turn one more time. They've selected an action space that gives them two shifts. They could spend these two shifts to take these two designs if they wanted to. This player would then take a book token that they would gain at the end of the round, and they would get to bank one shift at the end of this round as well. The game provides these three banked shift tokens to remind players just in case they can't remember. The player would then place their two selected designs in the open spaces on their player board designated for designs. The player has spent the two shifts that they have for this action. However, they still have some banked shifts available and they can spend up to two. This player decides to spend two of their banked shifts to move their training marker up two spaces on the training track. Since they've spent a total of four shifts in this department, they can no longer spend any shifts to take actions in this department. If a player has any book tokens on their player board, they can also spend any number of book tokens they want to train one level on the track in their selected department. Books can be spent to train one level per book token used in the department where your worker is currently located. These book tokens don't count against your used shifts either. So, if you've just used two shifts, you can use as many book tokens as you want to or are able to. And if you've already spent all four shifts in a department, you can still use book tokens to train. They don't count against your shift limit. Since the purple player has passed the certification space on the training track, they are now certified in this department. This would potentially give them special actions, it would give them a bonus that they could unlock, and it would allow them to claim certain bonuses on the certification track. We'll look in detail later in the video at what each certification bonus will do for a player. Once a player has finished selecting designs from the design department, slide any designs to the right to fill in empty spaces and fill the remaining empty spaces from the appropriate deck. For instance, on the bottom, you would slide these designs over and then fill from this deck. The next department to look at is the logistics department. Let's say, for instance, that the blue player went to the space in the logistics department with three shifts. The first action that a player can take in the logistics department is to issue a Kanban order. When issuing a Kanban order, these symbols mean that the players would have to spend one shift, but they would get to bank one shift at the end of the round. It's also important to note that a player can only fulfill one Kanban order per turn. To fulfill a Kanban order, a player will take one of the Kanban order cards from their hand and place it in this section so that two of the part symbols are on one side of this line in the middle and four of the part symbols are on the other side. Players will then populate the different warehouses with parts depending on how they placed their card. In this example, since the order card was placed with the pink, yellow, and white side on the same side as the pink, yellow, and white warehouses, the players would place one part of each color 
in the corresponding warehouse. Since the order card was placed with two blue parts symbols on the same side as the blue warehouse, the player would place two blue parts in the corresponding warehouse. After fulfilling the order in this way, the player would place the used Kanban order card on the bottom of the deck and draw a new card to replace it to put in their hand. The other action that a player can take while in the logistics department is taking one type of part for each shift that they spend. So for instance, the blue player could spend their two remaining shifts to take all of the yellow parts and all of the blue parts, or if they wanted to, they could take all of the pink parts and all of the yellow parts or any combination of these choices. The player would then place all the collected parts in the spaces on their player board designed to hold parts. It's important to note that players can only hold parts equal to the number of open spaces they have for parts on their player board. If they would take an action that would cause them to take more than what they can hold, they simply leave the parts that they can't take on the board. And just like in the design department, players can spend their shifts or their book tokens to train in this department as well. The next department to talk about is the assembly line. When visiting this department, players can supply parts to the different car models to move them along the respective tracks. The orange player has placed their worker in the assembly line on the spot giving them three shifts. The orange player currently has one blue part that they could supply to the assembly line to move a car along but they want to save this blue part to upgrade their car design in a later round. So they decide to use a parts voucher. Let's briefly look at what that does. A player can use a parts voucher at any time during their turn. They simply return the parts voucher to the supply and then take a part of any color that they wish. They can then use that part to perform specific actions. So using the part they just acquired, the orange player is able to take the action to provide needed parts. For one shift, a player can place one part on the top of an assembly line matching a particular color. There are a few restrictions to placing parts, so we'll talk about those now. When supplying needed parts, a player must place a part of a different color than what is already there. So for instance, a player wouldn't be able to come and supply another white part to the green assembly line later. They would have to choose a part of another color. Parts for each specific model of car can also be upgraded in the testing and innovation department. We'll look at what that means in detail in a few moments. But for now, just know that if any part for any model of car has been upgraded, that part must always be supplied first. So for instance, if the brakes for the green car had been upgraded, which is represented by white cubes, a player must always first supply this line with brakes, and then after that, they're free to supply with any other different part that they wish. When a player takes an action to supply a needed part to any of the car models, this will cause this line to move cars forward. So for instance, since this player has placed a part on the green line, this would cause this line of cars to move. You would first move the car in the top space down and then push this car forward in any direction that you're able to move. In this case, cars in this position can only move straight down. Finally, you'll place a new model of the supplied car in the top space. Let's say that in a later turn, a player decides to supply the blue car line with a part. This would cause the topmost blue car to move down, and this would push this blue car in whichever direction the player wanted it to go. For instance, the arrows from this space point in this direction as well, so if they wanted to, a player could cause this next blue car to move into the green car and push the green car down, causing this green car to roll off the line. When this happens, a number of things occur. When a car rolls off the line, the player who caused this car to roll off the line will immediately score productivity points depending on which lane the car exited. In our example, the car exited the middle lane, so the player would score two productivity points. And when a car rolls off the line, it's immediately placed in the first open space behind the pace car on the testing track. It's important to note that only four cars may ever be behind the pace car at one time. If a fifth car would ever be added to the line, simply remove the car closest to the pace car, returning it to the supply, shift all other cars up, and place the newly manufactured car at the end of the line. In addition to scoring productivity points when a car rolls off the line, the player may receive a red seat if they've supplied a car that's in demand. For instance, the player just caused a green car to roll off the line, and green is currently in demand. 
this player would immediately gain a red seat token. If at any point during the game a player gains a red seat tile, and they have seats that are turned face down in the administration department, they will immediately discard the red seat token and turn one of their tiles face up, showing one more seat in the administration department. This will become very important during meetings, which we'll discuss in detail later. If a player ever gains a red seat tile and they already have all of their available seats flipped face up, they will instead place the red seat tile on the indicated space of their player board. Once a player has checked to see how many points they receive, and if they've fulfilled a car that's in demand, once again, place the appropriate car at the top of its supply line. It's important to note that if the top space of any model of car is ever empty, and there are no more remaining cars in the supply to fill this space, this car model can no longer be supplied with parts. If at the end of their turn, a player has removed enough red seats to completely empty one of the demand tiles, the demand for this car has been met. The players will then remove the top demand tile and place a new one from the supply. Immediately place the number of red seats indicated at the top of the demand tile and then shuffle the removed demand tile back into the demand tile deck. And once again, just like all other departments, a player can spend one shift or spend training book tokens in this department to train. The next department to talk about is the testing and innovation department. Let's look at the yellow player as an example. The yellow player has placed their worker in the testing and innovation department space on the spot showing three shifts. The first action that a player can take in the testing and innovation department is to claim a car. A player must have a design tile showing a car that is on the test track to be able to claim a car. In this example, the yellow player has two different design tiles showing a red car and one design tile showing a blue car. This would allow the yellow player to claim cars from the test track. The cost to claim a car from the test track depends on how far the car is from the pace car. To claim a car right behind the pace car costs one shift. To claim the second and third cars from behind the pace car costs two shifts for each car. And finally, if you want to claim a car that is last in the line or fourth, you have to pay three shifts to do so. In addition to paying shifts, you have to discard to the supply a design tile matching the same type of car that you want to claim. So for instance, let's say that the yellow player wanted to claim a red and a blue car. This would cost them one shift to claim the red car and two additional shifts to claim the blue car. This is okay because they currently have three shifts to spend. So for a total of three shifts, the yellow player could discard two design tiles matching the types of cars that they want to claim. These design tiles are placed under the central deck in the design department, and then the player would claim the two cars that they want from the test track. Anytime a car is claimed from the test track, the pace car moves one space for each car claimed. In our example, since two cars had been claimed, the pace car will move two spaces. Then any remaining cars will be moved to fill in the spaces behind the pace car. Moving the pace car to the next checkered space will cause a meeting to occur, which we'll look at in more detail in a moment. After a car has been claimed, a player is able to place it in one of the available spaces on their player board to hold cars. These spaces at the top of the player board are known as the player's garage spaces. A car can be placed in any available garage that the player wishes. And when a car is placed in a garage, it will trigger a bonus. For instance, if the player chose to place their two cars in these two garages, they would gain two book tokens that they could use in the next round, and they would bank one shift that they could use in the next round. If a player instead decided to place the cars in these two spaces, they would gain two book tokens and two parts vouchers. You can do this in any way that you like. If a player wishes to place a car in one of their garages and all of their available garages are full, then and only then a player can discard one of the cars from their garages and replace it with the one that they wish to claim. However, it's important to note that a player will not gain the bonus again. This is a one-time benefit. The next action that a player can take in the testing and innovation department is to upgrade a car part. To upgrade a car part, a player has to have a design tile that shows a part to be upgraded. So for instance, the yellow player has the red car tile showing an engine upgrade. In addition to having this tile, 
a player has to have the type of part that matches the upgrade. So in this case, since the player has a design tile showing an engine part and an available engine part to spend, they could upgrade this part in the red car. To take the upgrade part action, a player would spend one shift, the player would take the available car part from their supply and put it on any available part upgrade space in the matching car. So for instance, this player could place this part right here, gaining one productivity point immediately, or they could place it on this space, gaining a book token for the next tile, or they could place it on this space, banking one shift that they could then use on the next round as well. After upgrading a particular part type, in this case the engine, the matching value of this particular type would move up by one space. Now, the in-game value for tested designs for engines is two points instead of the zero points that it was before. It's important to note that parts values can be affected by any player. So for instance, if a different player were to come along and upgrade the engine on the blue car, they would also move this part value forward, increasing its value for every player that has a tested design at the end of the game. We'll look at what it means to have a tested design in a moment. After supplying the required part and increasing that part's value, the player will take the design tile that they used, flip it over, and place it to the right of their player board. This shows that they have an upgraded part of this type. The player will also then immediately score two productivity points. These points are scored in addition to any bonus gained by placing the part. If a player has an upgraded part of a particular car, and they have the matching car in one of their garages, this is considered to be a tested design. Tested designs will score players points at the end of each week and at the end of the game, and the way that they score points will differ based on if it's at the end of the week or at the end of the game, and we'll look at that in more detail in a moment. But just know that if you have an upgraded part and you have the matching car in your garage, it can be a great way for you to score extra points. And lastly, just like every other department, a player can spend shifts or use book tokens to train in this department as well. The last department where a player can place their worker is the administration department. The administration department only has two spaces, one showing one shift and the other showing two. In the administration department, the players have one of only two actions available to them. The first action is they can micromanage. When taking a micromanage action, a player simply works and or trains in any other one department. So for instance, this player could come to this space in the administration department and then spend two shifts in any other one department, either training or taking actions there. Players can also spend shifts or book tiles to train in the administration department itself. And it is important to note that players are allowed to split their shifts or their training books between the one department that they've selected to work in and the administration department itself. So for instance, with two shifts, a player could train one space in the assembly line department and then train one space in the administration department itself. This is true with any other department that the player chooses while in the administration department. Now that we've looked in detail at all of the available actions within the departments, I want to explain what it means to certify in a department. A player can spend actions to train in any department where their worker currently is. And if a player ever passes the certification marker in any of the certification tracks, they will immediately become certified in this department. A couple of things will happen because of that. First, a player will take their certification meeple and place it in one of the available spaces in the next section on the certification track. They will immediately gain bonuses based on where they place their certification meeple. For instance, this player could place their certification meeple here, gaining one part voucher. Just like with every other benefit aside from productivity points, the player has to wait until the next round to use this gained benefit. The next thing that will happen is the player will gain a bonus based on which department they're certifying in. If a player certifies in the design department, they will immediately remove the lock token from the fifth design space on their player board. Place the lock token nearby to keep track of how many certifications you have. This will now allow this player to hold up to five designs instead of four. Any player who's certified in the design department also has the ability of selecting one of the designs from these three stacks to the left. Normally, these spaces are off limits, 
But if you're certified in this department, you can select designs from these spaces. If a player becomes certified in the administration department, they will select one of the spaces in the next available zone on the certification track, just like we looked at earlier. And in addition to that, they will immediately be able to remove the lock from their locked space on the seats. Once again, place this lock token near the player board. This will give this player the ability to potentially flip up five seats, which can be used to score during meetings, which we'll look at in a few minutes. If a player certifies in the logistics department, a couple of things will happen. First, they'll move their certification meeple to an available space in the next zone of the certification track, just like with every other certification. They'll gain the listed rewards as usual. Then, the player is able to remove the lock token from their parts area on their player board. This means that this player will now be able to hold six parts in their inventory instead of five. Once again, place the lock token near the player board to show how many certifications this player has. If a player is certified in the logistics department, they also have access to an additional action that they can take on their turn. Only one time per turn, a player can spend one shift if they're certified to claim a parts voucher. Once again, this parts voucher will only be available to use in the following round. If a player becomes certified in the assembly line department, they will first be able to move their certification marker to an available space in the next certification zone, just like with any other certification. And then the player is allowed to remove the lock token from their fifth garage. This will allow them to hold up to five cars instead of four. In addition, the rewards for placing a car in this fifth unlocked garage are slightly different than the rest of the garages. This garage simply allows you to claim any two of the listed benefits whenever you place a car there. So for instance, a player could flip up one seat in the meeting room and then claim a bank shift, or they could claim a bank shift and one parts voucher, any combination of two of these bonuses. If a player certifies in the testing and innovation department, they will first move their certification meeple and claim a bonus, just like with every other certification, and then they will remove the lock from this double upgraded design space. This would allow them to upgrade one part twice on a future turn. Let's look at how a player does that. Let's say that the yellow player were in the testing and innovation department, and they had this tile showing an engine upgrade for a yellow vehicle. For one shift, they could upgrade the engine for the yellow vehicle. They don't currently have an engine part in their supply, but remember, they have a parts voucher, and these can be spent freely at any time on your turn to gain any one part. So the yellow player spins the part voucher, turns the design over as usual, but this time places it in this double upgrade space. The player would place the upgraded part in any available part space on the matching car model. They would get the listed benefits as usual. The player would then increase the value of the upgraded part twice instead of once. And as a one-time additional bonus, the player would receive the new part's value immediately. In this case, this player would receive four productivity points. The player would then score two productivity points for upgrading the design as usual. It's important to note that each player may only do this once per game, and each part type can only be upgraded twice once per game. So for instance, once the yellow player has upgraded engines in this way, no other player can perform a double upgrade with an engine part. It has to be one of the other five available parts. It's important to note that a player doesn't have to stop on a training track once they become certified. They can continue to increase their training level until they reach the last space. This means that they have become an expert in this department. If a player is the first to reach the last space in a department, they will gain one red seat token. And once again, if they gain a red seat token and have any face down seats at the meeting table, they will immediately discard this token and turn one seat face up. In addition to claiming the red seat tile if a player is first to reach the last space of a certification track, the player will then be able to look through any remaining award plaques. They can choose one of the award plaques and take the listed benefit. If they choose productivity points, they can gain them immediately, and if they choose a bank shift or a parts voucher or a training book, they will receive those benefits in the next round. After choosing whichever benefit they want, they would place the remaining tokens face down for other players to potentially claim. The token that they've claimed can simply be removed from the game.
Now that we've looked at all of the different departments where a player can place a worker, and we've looked at how to certify and what happens when you become certified, I briefly want to mention the recycling department. The recycling department is this space on the board here. At any time on a player's turn, they can freely exchange parts with the recycling department by following a couple of rules. To trade with the recycling department, a player must first place one part type that isn't currently in the recycling department. They're then allowed to take any other one part that they want from the recycling department. So for instance, after placing a black part here, a player could choose any of the other three parts to take on their player board. It's important to note that there must always be three parts in the recycling department. And it's also important to note that players can take this action as many times as they wish on their turn. It's important to remember the recycling department when needing a particular type of part to take during an action. It is very important to note, however, that recycling cannot be used during meetings, which we'll look at in a few minutes. Now I want to take a moment to briefly look at factory goals. As players take actions to claim cars, or upgrade designs, or become certified in different departments, they may meet one or more factory goals. If a player ever meets one of the listed requirements on the factory goals, in this instance upgrading two designs, they would immediately be able to claim one red seat. It's also important to note that the same player can claim multiple factory goals. For instance, if one player upgraded two designs, and then in a later part of their turn upgraded a fourth design, they would immediately be able to take this red seat as well. If any factory goal tile is ever emptied of all of the red seats, simply flip it over to show that it can no longer be activated. These factory goal tiles work in the same way, except these factory goals relate to collecting cars in your garages, and these factory goals relate to becoming certified in different departments. Now that we've looked in detail at all of the different actions that a player can take in each of the departments, and we've looked at some of the bonuses that players can achieve taking their actions as well, I want to discuss the factory manager, Sandra. The game comes with a factory manager AI known as Sandra, who can play in one of two different game modes. Sandra can either be nice or she can be harsh. Let's look at what it means if Sandra is nice first. Each round, Sandra will move from department to department in a preset pattern. If Sandra is in her desk in the administration department, she will move to the furthest left space that's available. If Sandra is in any of the departments, she will move to the next available space in a department on the way to her administration desk. So in this instance, the next department would be the assembly line, but both spaces are blocked. So Sandra would have to move to this available space in logistics. Players will then complete their turns as normal, turning their meeples face down when they're done, and then Sandra will take a turn evaluating the players in the department where she's currently located and then performing an action. Sandra can either be played using a nice mode or a harsh mode. And the way that she evaluates players in each department will differ based on which mode players are using. After evaluating players differently based on the mode chosen, Sandra will then complete a predetermined action depending on which department she's currently located in. Let's look at the way she will evaluate players and each action that she'll take, starting with the Testing and Innovation Department. When Sandra visits the Testing and Innovation Department and she's being played in the nice mode, she will evaluate players in this way. Whoever is furthest on the certification track will get Sandra's attention. If there are multiple players on the end space, the player who is stacked on top will be first in the certification order. So in this instance, Sandra would only pay attention to the yellow player. Then Sandra will reward the selected player if they've achieved certain goals within this department. When playing with nice Sandra, the players can potentially gain an award if they have two upgraded designs. Since the yellow player meets this criteria, they can potentially gain rewards. If a player has impressed nice Sandra and met the requirements based on the department in which she's currently evaluating, they will gain productivity points for any banked shifts they have above five. Now in this instance, the yellow player has met the requirements, but they're only at five banked shifts, so they would gain no productivity points. If instead, the player had banked seven shifts and met the requirement based on the department that Sandra was currently evaluating, the yellow player would have gained two productivity points for having two banked shifts over five. If playing with the harsh Sandra, 
Sandra will evaluate all of the players who are tied for last. This includes people who haven't yet started their training in any department. For each player that is being evaluated by Harsh Sandra, she will penalize them points if they haven't met certain objectives. In the Testing and Innovation Department, Sandra will penalize any player tied for last place or any player simply in last place if they haven't upgraded at least two designs. If they haven't completed this objective, then Sandra will penalize them with productivity points equal to any banked shifts they have less than five. So in this example, the orange and the blue player would both lose one productivity point for having one banked shift less than five. If they had instead had only two banked shifts, then they would each lose three productivity points. After evaluating players in either a negative or a positive way depending on the play mode, Sandra would take a preset action in each department. The action that Sandra takes is the same regardless of which mode of play is being used. In the testing and innovation department, Sandra will advance the pace car one step. All of the other cars will advance with the pace car. After all of this has been completed, Sandra will lay down and it will then be the next player's turn. Next, let's look at how Sandra evaluates players in the assembly line department. If playing with nice Sandra, she will evaluate only the player who is furthest on the certification track, just like in the previous example. The goal in the assembly line department is to have at least two cars in your garages. Since yellow has met this goal, they would then score productivity points if they have any bank shifts above five. If playing with harsh Sandra, she will once again evaluate only the player or the players who are currently in last place on the certification track. In this example, blue is the lowest player on the certification track. If the blue player didn't have at least two cars in their garages, they would be penalized productivity points equal to any bank shifts less than five. After evaluating players in this way, Sandra would then take her predetermined action. In the assembly line, Sandra clears all car parts from the different model assembly lines. In the logistics department, Sandra will evaluate each player in the same way as the other departments, depending on what mode of play has been chosen. Nice Sandra will evaluate only the furthest player on the certification track. In this instance, the purple player. In the logistics department, Sandra checks to see if players have collected at least two car parts on their player board. If they have, Nice Sandra will reward the selected player with points equal to the bank shifts that they have above five. Harsh Sandra will evaluate players in the same way as in the other departments. If either yellow, orange, or blue have less than two parts collected on their player boards, they will each be penalized with productivity points equal to the bank shifts that they have less than five. After evaluating players in the logistics department, Sandra will then complete her predetermined action. In the logistics department, Sandra will remove all parts from each of the warehouses until there are only one remaining. Sandra loves efficiency. When evaluating the design department, Sandra's pattern will remain the same. If playing with nice Sandra, she will select the player who is furthest along in the certification track, in this example, the orange player, if the selected player has at least two designs with their blueprint side showing face up, like the orange player does here, then they would be rewarded with productivity points equal to any bank shifts that they have above five. In this example, the orange player would gain one productivity point. Harsh Sandra would evaluate players in the same way as the other departments. Any player or players who are on the last space of the certification track would potentially be penalized. If the yellow player doesn't have at least two designs with their blueprint side showing face up on their player board, they are penalized with productivity points equal to any banked shifts they have less than five. After evaluating all players, Sandra will take her predetermined action in the design department. In the design department, the predetermined action that Sandra will take is removing the oldest four design tiles and shuffling them into the central deck. The designs will then be refilled as normal. And finally, let's look at how Sandra evaluates players in the administration department. It's important to note that anytime Sandra returns to the administration department, she occupies her unique space at her desk. The method of evaluation is the same as in all the other departments. Playing with nice Sandra, she will only evaluate the furthest player on the track, and playing with harsh Sandra, she will only evaluate the players or player who is last on the track. To earn Sandra's reward or avoid Sandra's penalty, a player must be certified in at least two different departments. The method of points gained and lost is the same as in the other departments. After evaluating players at the administration department, Sandra will take a predetermined action. 
In the administration department, Sandra will advance the week marker by one space and trigger an end of week scoring. End of week scoring is evaluated as follows. During end of week scoring, players will score points for each car in their garage. Players will score two productivity points for each upgrade that they have made, or in other words, for each tested design, and one productivity point for each upgrade that someone else has made on that particular model of car. So let's look at the yellow player's board for an example. The first car in the yellow player's garage is a black concept car. One upgrade to the black concept car has been made by another player, so the yellow player would score one productivity point for this model. The yellow player then has two yellow cars in their garages. Since the yellow player has upgraded a part on the yellow car, they would score two productivity points for each yellow car. In addition to that, another player has upgraded a part on the yellow car as well. So in total, the player would score three points for each yellow car they have in their garages for a total of six points. Finally, the yellow player would score two productivity points for the tested design that they have for the red car. Now that we've discussed all of the actions that you can take during the game and how the AI will act throughout the game, I want to discuss what happens during a meeting. If during a round, the white pace car ever reaches the next checkered space on the test track, first fill in all of the cars behind the pace car and then move the white meeting marker to the meeting reminder space in the administration department. This lets players know that at the end of the current round, a meeting will occur. During the meeting, Players will have chances to spend their available face-up seats at the meeting table to claim achievements and score productivity points. Turn order in a meeting is determined by the certification track. Whoever is furthest on the certification track has a chance to speak first, followed by the next players in order. So in this instance, the turn order for speaking at a meeting would be purple, yellow, orange, and then blue. During meetings, players will have two options. They can either speak or pass. When speaking, players have one of two options. The first option is to play a pet project. Each player will have three project cards in their hand from the start of the game and in each continuing round. A player is required to play at least one pet project from their hand during each meeting. Pet projects can either be scored by the player who just played the pet project or by any other player at the table. The other option that a player has when speaking at a meeting is taking one of their available face-up seats and placing it on one of the objectives in the middle of the table, which will allow them to score productivity points depending on how well they've met the objective. Let's look at an example of a project card to show you how players can score points. To speak about a project, a player would take one of their available seat tokens and place it on the project card that they want to speak about. Each project card will reward players for doing different things. In this example, this project card rewards players for each banked shift they have. It's important to note that it will reward a player up to a maximum of this number printed in the top right. So for instance, if the purple player played this seat onto this project card, they would be able to score two points per banked shift that they have up to three times. So since the purple player currently has seven banked shifts, they would be able to score this three times for a total of six points. It's also important to note that a player can only speak about a project once. So after the purple player has placed a seat on this card, they're not able to do so again. Speaking about a project first will also allow you to score the most potential points. Let's say for instance that the yellow player decided to come and speak about this project later. They would also score two productivity points for every banked shift that they have, but their maximum number would be reduced by one. Since they're the second player to talk about this project, they can only score these points up to two times instead of three. So in total, the yellow player would only score four productivity points instead of a potential six. It's also important to note that each project card has a total number of players that can speak about that project. In this example, since this card shows three seats, three players can talk about this project but the third player to come and talk about this would only gain two points as this multiplier has been reduced to one. Every project card will work in this way. There will be a certain requirement that will reward a number of victory points a total number of times depending on how many players have claimed it. 
And once again, it's important to note that a player is not allowed to pass during the meeting until they have played a pet project card. So for instance, if the purple player wanted to pass from the meeting, but they had not yet played a project card, they would have to first select one of the pet projects from their hand to play face up as a pet project. They could, if they wanted to, immediately place a seat on the pet project that they've just played, scoring the maximum number of victory points if they've met the conditions. But if they choose not to do this, each other player now has an opportunity to play one of their seats on this card and score the listed bonus. If a player has played one of their pet project cards earlier during the meeting, they're allowed to pass if they want to. And it's important to note that if a player passes, they are allowed to jump in later in a meeting and score more pet projects or normal projects if they still have remaining seats. A meeting is only concluded once all players have passed consecutively. Once all players have passed consecutively, the old business portion of the meeting is complete and you will move on to new business. First, return any player's seats that they've used to speak about projects to their space around the table face down. Then, if any player has red seat tiles, they will discard as many tiles as they can to turn seats face up until they can either no longer do this or until they run out of red seat tiles. Then all of the face up performance goals in the middle will be discarded. Then each player will place one of their two remaining cards face down. This will be a player's recommended goal for the next round. After all players have played one of their face down cards in the middle, turn all cards face up. And it's important to note that if you're playing with fewer than four players, any empty spaces during this round will be refilled from the top of the project cards deck. Then each player will draw two cards to refill their hand up to three. Finally, move the meeting token back to the test track and move the production marker one space forward. Play will continue in this way until one of two conditions has been met. If the weak marker has reached the third space and the production cycle marker has reached the second space, the end of the game will be triggered. The end of the game will also be triggered if the weak marker has reached the second space and the production cycle marker has reached the third space. It's also possible for both markers to reach the third space depending on how the gameplay turns out. When the game end condition has been met, finish the day including any possible meetings or possible end of the week scoring or both, and then proceed to final scoring. The first step during final scoring is for each player to collect any face-up seats they have left around the meeting table. These face-up seats can be used to claim end game goals. They will place the collected seats on their player board to use during final scoring. Each player can score the final goals, they're not exclusive, and each player scoring will receive the full amount of victory points. This differs from how players score projects. It's also important to note that players can use red seats that they might have accumulated on their player boards during this step. Each player will then have a chance to score any or all of the goals that they've met. This goal, for instance, gives a player seven productivity points if they've managed to collect three cars in their garage that are of the same model. Since the orange player has completed this goal, they can place one of their available seats there, scoring seven productivity points. Then, each other player around the table would have the chance to score the same goal as well, or any of the other goals. Each of the final goals tiles is different, and will change each time you play. Next, players will earn one productivity point per shift they have banked in the shift bank. Players will also score one productivity point for each remaining seat, parts voucher, or book tile on their player board. Players will then score productivity points for each car that they have in their garage. The amount of productivity points that they score will be listed on these spaces right here. So for instance, the yellow player would score four points for each of their yellow cars because the yellow cars are worth four points at the end of the game. They would score six points for their black concept car, and they would score five points for their red car. Then, players would score points for their tested designs. Remember, a tested design is a design that you've upgraded in which you have a matching car in one of your garages. Score points for a tested design equal to the part's value at the end of the game. So for instance, the yellow player tested the engine on both the yellow and the red car. This means that the yellow player would score four points for the red tested design that they have, and then four more points for the yellow tested design that they have. It's important to note that you don't score points for each car that you have in your garage. This is different from end of week scoring. 
So in this instance, for their two tested designs, the yellow player would score a total of eight points. Then, players will score each certification track in each of the five different departments. The player who is first on the certification track would score five productivity points, the player who's second on the track would score three productivity points, and the player who's third would score one productivity point. Any players in fourth place would score no productivity points. After all of this scoring has been completed, the player with the most points is the winner. If there's a tie, the tie is broken by the player who has the most cars. If there's still a tie, the tie is broken by the player who has the most tested designs. If there's still a tie, the tie is broken by the player with the most shifts banked. If there's still a tie, the tie is broken by the player with the most certifications. And if there's still a tie, the victory is shared. All right, everybody, that was our video. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any other questions about how to play the game, please comment below or email me at thedicereview at gmail.com and I'll be happy to answer those questions as quickly as I can. If you want to hear more from the Dicey Review, you can listen to the Dicey Review podcast. It can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, TunedIn, SoundCloud, pretty much any podcast app. You can read our written reviews at thedicereview.com and make sure and connect with us on social media or at our Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, we'll see you at the table.